Doctor, look. Stand aside, nurse. I'm Doctor Homebrew. Hey, everybody! Welcome to Doctor Homebrew. For the next hour or so, we're going to be drinking home brews. We're going to be talking to home brewers, and then we're gonna be making fun of Brian Cooper. And I would say Brian Please. Shaw. I was going to normally Wait, say Brian right. Shaw, but Brian Shaw has had a terrible, no good, very bad day. So I've I don't want to struggle with Saran Wrap Facebook plans. <laughs> uh, uh. What's up, fellas? Welcome to the show. Welcome back. Good to see you guys. Hey, again. thank you. It's yeah. good to I see feel, you, sir. I feel welcome and to yeah. hear you. That's right. That's right. And hear and to hear Brian. Well, uh, Brian's Hearing Brian's is made possible by a grant from the Five Star Chemicals Foundation. Go to fivestarchemicals.com, learn about everything you need to do to make great beer at home, which is clean and sanitized. Everything we've ever covered 100 times over. Uh, Like I said, PBW is always good for just general household cleaning. I have, I'm sure everybody has these, but like in their, um, in your like uh, uh, stove hood you know, it mm-hmm. sucks up all the, you know, the, the shitty fumes from yeah. when you burn your eggs or whatever. Yeah. Um, mine are, it's like f- sort of f- wide mesh s- stainless steel, I guess. I don't know. It's like this stainless steel mesh for the filters. Yeah, that filter kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it just, so it just catches the grease, right? And I soaked those in PBW the other day in my sink. Perfectly clean. Love it. Wow. PBW, then once I just, again. I just try not to look at them. That kind of solves <laughs> yeah. the problem. Well, you know what? Not to sound disgusting like a, just a, a slob who has no, you know, sort of, I don't know, anatomy in his brain for cleaning. But, like, you get the grease in there, and it traps it, which is supposed to do, and then it cools because mm-hmm. you're not cooking anymore. But then you start yeah. cooking the next day, and then you notice a drip fall in and you're like where did that uh, come from it's not condensation oh god yuck yeah so you got to clean it every year no i don't know what it is yeah but anyway five star chemicals saving my bacon literally <laughs> mm. um anyway to start off the show boys and girls we are joined by julio julio welcome to dr homebrew dude oh thank you man yeah it's a pleasure uh, you've been on before no no first no. time no. okay oh nice Awesome. Uh-huh. Well, welcome. You sent in uh, a best bitter, which, number one, you already get 50 points for in my book. <laughs> um, but also, because you send it in 22-ounce 22 22 swing top bottles. Like, right. you're, you're an animal, and I want to I wanna ask what's wrong with you. Oh, because <laughs> I fucking hate bottling 12-ounce bottles. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I yes, actually smashed a bunch of them uh, with, uh, you know, one of those uh, decent, you know, the um, bench, top. bench top ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So I, I got rid of it and I, I switched <laughs> yeah. over to, to uh, flip tops when I could. Um, yeah. I'm looking into canning, but it's 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 just that extra hurdle of expense that it's like, all right, I got to get everything else sorted out before I, I jump into that. Yeah, that's definitely like a nice to have is a canning, you know, a home canning system, which is. Five years ago, you know, you would say that, and you're like, okay, yeah, sure. A home canning <laughs> system as a home brewer, yeah. But now, it's, I mean, more beer has the cannular, yeah. I think is what it is, and it's supposed to be the thing. Mm-hmm. And they, they wouldn't cost $300 to send across the country, so, you know, that's a plus two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is true. Yes, it, it, it did cost a pretty penny to send those uh, bottles uh, over. Yeah. Well, thank you. So I have yeah. to ask, is there a reason you haven't thought about kegging? Uh, I, it's because I'm in an apartment that I don't have yeah. a second fridge for. Um, before when Fair I was living at, at home, uh, I had some space with, in my parents' place. Yeah. They had a second fridge and I'm like, oh, we can that. So yeah. I actually jumped into kegging first and then had to revert back into bottling. Oh, know? damn. You okay. devolved. It happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I noticed too, each of these bottles has a, a logo on the top that says, it looks like it says Ogun and it has a, a sword stuck into the a sand by a few rocks by a beach side with all kinds of tropical foliage in the background. Look, it's kind of pretty. I, is this a hand-drawn label or is this your custom brand or what is this? So, so yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. Uh, I actually had a friend of mine um, do up the label for me. Uh, yeah. So, so I had a, uh, an idea, you know, a concept and then, you know, they were, you know, they were able to flesh it out for me and, you know, 
what's, had it done this way. What's the it significance? Of, uh, yeah, pirate something or other, you know. Like, yeah. What's the significance it was, of it? it? It's a machete. Um, so o- Ogun was uh, one of the Loa's, you know, one of the voodoo, uh, you know, patron saints, you would guess. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, um, they're sort of attributed to, you know, how Haiti was able to actually liberate themselves. Okay. So my family's from Dominican Republic. You know, we sh- share oh, cool. a heritage with uh, Haiti where, you know, our country is in our country. You know, it, mm-hmm. it was, you know, conquered by, you know, several people. And we're just the product of, you know, colonization. <laughs> right. so, yeah. so Haiti on their end, were, you know, they were able to liberate themselves, you know, from French's rule. Yeah. Francis rule, I'm sorry. Yeah. And uh, Ogun was, you know, one of the legends that, you know, was able to do it. Oh, nice. Ooh. Okay, like a patron Super saint cool. kind of a thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Nice, man. I like it. Yeah, ha- Haiti has such a, a fascinating history, and they were the like the one place that was able to like kick out all the colonizers, and then they got they paid the price for it for like a century afterwards. And on top of that, it's like all the natural disasters those poor people have to just suffer through every ten years. It seems like it's always a hurricane or earthquake or some terrible yeah, thing that happens to those guys yeah, right. and now it's uh political <laughs> <laughs> that's a, yeah that's that's never gonna i don't know uh, we'll, we'll table cool that and we'll talk about best better yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's yeah. cool man never, that's cool i like never it. say never never say never man i like Thank it you. all right well let's let's crack this and uh it, tell me about the best bitter julio is it something that you've done before or no this is a, a first time uh one-off um basically i i'm i'm into you know your realm of things where it's like all right how, how do i get a, a flavorful beer that doesn't you know murder me you know abv wise yeah like alcohol is is getting to the point where it's like all right i can have like a few and uh, you know fall out myself <laughs> right welcome so, buddy so yeah i i try to make an esb and the numbers were a little low so i'm like uh it's a best bitter now yeah which I, I sort of feel like this is how a lot of styles form you know, you're doing one thing, like, <laughs> this isn't very good, or not very good, but this isn't what, quite what I wanted. Let's call it another thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, awesome. So it's the first time. And um, since you're, it sounds like you're you're sort of getting ready to think about doing a brand on your own and starting a brewery on your own, are you looking for, like, recipe feedback or just general sort of rating, or, or how can we help, how can we best help you? To, uh, uh, all of the above, you know, okay. basically, since this is just my, my first time out, uh, you know, actually putting anything for professional feedback, ah, uh, the, nice. the, the, the closest thing I did was a, a homebrew uh, competition for one of our local breweries. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Bolero Snort out of uh, New Jersey. No, no. Bluto Snort? Sounds like I should be, though. Uh, <clears throat> it sounds yeah. like a really cool name. They, they do a lot of um, uh, gimmick beers, I'd say. So, like, mm-hmm. a, a lot of lactose. Um so their their most famous beer is like uh it's like a creamsicle. So it's okay. you know vanilla, <laughs> yeah. orange, you know, I, I you know so it's it's an IPA, but it's you know very soft. Not, okay. N- I I don't want to you know trash them, but uh you know th- not my my cup of tea. You know it's very modern for for beer. Let's there just you put go. It that way. Very modern. Damn, that's a that's a very polite way of saying uh, I don't spend money there. Very yeah. likely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not JP's uh, thing either. I would guess. Yeah. yeah that's, that's the kind of thing I would try like an ounce or two in like yeah. a taster and be like, all right, I've had that and then move on with my life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I don't know if I'd finish a can, but you know, uh, for sure. it's, it, it would be nice to try. Yeah. Well, how did you do in the competition? What did you enter and how did you do? So uh, I entered in, uh, it was a hibiscus uh, wheat beer. Okay. So it was mostly a wheat beer just with some hibiscus that uh, I ended up, um, you know, throwing in during the whirlpool and a little bit during uh, dry hopping and that they told me within the top 10 there were about 35 entrants that's pretty good dude and uh the top beer was uh, another hibiscus beer that just happened <laughs> to have uh sea no salt shit. and watermelon nope. oh okay all right wow. uh, like, all right so i, I yeah they just needed that <laughs> extra zhuzh. yep <laughs> that's right dude <laughs> Zhuzh it up a little bit. You got yeah, to. I mean, yeah. I think hibiscus. That I mean, they both sound great, but hibiscus, watermelon, a little bit of salt, sounds pretty good, man. I know. I was so pissed that I didn't yeah. think it first. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Find that person when you open up and do a, a collab with him. That's oh, a, for sure. It's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like I lost with this, but you know, you did the better version. Let, let, yeah, let, let's, yeah, let's pick you up. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> um, all right, Cooper. Why don't you go ahead and start with Julio's beer, please? 
Okay, yeah. Uh, the the big tall bottle with the swing top there had a had a had a low hiss when removing the stopper, and uh, in the nose I got a a pleasant low uh, toasty and and caramel malt aroma, a little bit of biscuit, um, clean somewhat fruity ale fermentation, but not too much fruit there. Uh, medium low earthy hop is present, uh, no DMS or diacetyl. Um, you know. Smells smells pretty pretty good for style, like a little maybe a little light on the caramel, um, but you can have you know it has a range. You can you can put a lot of different malts in there. Um, appearance wise, it's a light amber colored uh, beer with a medium low whitish head of mostly finer bubbles. Uh, it was, I, when I was looking at the top of it, it, kind of had kind of a clumpy like a little chunky kind of appearance to it. Like there was a lot of variation in the foam that formed on the top. So that maybe there's some large chain proteins kind of clumping together in there or something that's that you know it's it was an interesting looking uh head so um yeah just, and there is some slight um uh, a fair amount of haze to the beer it's it should maybe be a little bit clearer but um we'll we'll forgive that when we get uh flavor and everything else the head actually had fairly good retention but it's it kind of fades and leaves a little uh you know a couple of open spots on the surface after a little while uh, flavor wise, medium, low bitterness, uh, somewhat coarse in nature at the time, uh, at the same time, even though it's like kind of light bitterness, it's not harsh, but it's kind of combining with the toastiness or something maybe. And when I'm retasting it, I was like, was there, was there maybe a tiny little light, light, light phenolic in there blending or something, but I'm not sure on that. Um, it, it, if it is, it's very, very minor, but, uh, the um, the finish is nice and dry, and then that biscuity malt and and a lightly caramelly malt comes through. Um, definitely balanced to the malt as it should be. Um, again, a kind of a low earthy hop flavor. Um, again, some to- yeah toasty and biscuit malt lingers into the aftertaste with that edge of the, the bitterness. Um, yeah, very pretty dry. It seems like it's very well attenuated. Um, fairly clean fermentation I, I didn't get any real off flavors no dms or, or diacetyl but i'm just a little, little slightly harsh about the, the the way the bitterness expresses itself but it's not really really biting or, or rough but just a little little coarse i guess but uh mouthfeel wise it's medium light bodied with a medium low uh, carbon dioxide i'm not getting any warmth or, or creaminess to speak of uh, just a, a bit of astringency here that i may be picking up alongside that 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 little rough slightly rough edge but uh it's just attracting someone it's kind, of, it's kind of a minor point it's not like a really heavily phenolic beer at all it's just a little bit of kind of like uh licking the grape skins you know a little just a little uh little edge like that but um overall it's not a really not a bad version of uh the best bitter at all just um to me it, it was it was lacking some of the kind of clean bitterness of the style uh, you know it's just it is a bitter and, and the bitterness is kind of in the background. There's something that's kind of fighting with it a little bit there. Um, what is there seems to clash just a bit with either these stringency or that kind of toastiness. That, that's something's a little um, biting or a little harsher impression overall, but uh, the malts that are there, are, you know, are a good start. It seems like it, I would like a, a little more of a good clean caramel kind of balancing that biscuit and toast that's there. Um, still very good, quite cleanly fermented. Um, you can clean up that astringency pretty pretty easily. Um, just kind of, you know, use good water for the style and watch the sparge temperature, you know, if you're sparging or the steep temperature if you're steeping the grains. Um, I'm not sure if you're doing all grain. We'll talk about that. Uh, you probably, I imagine you are. <laughs> um, and the pH of the final runnings, you know, don't let it go down below. Uh, or I'm sorry, uh, you know, come up above six <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, but yeah, that'll, that'll probably improve the smoothness a little bit. And, and, it, but it was again, an easy sample to finish. And I, I like the beer a lot. It, it comes into a uh, very good uh, territory for me. I, I gave it a 34. So nice beer. Oh man. Appreciate it. Excellent. Could use a little minor fine tuning, but I, yeah, maybe, hopefully we can help you with that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure. If not, uh, you know, imagine at the end of this, after Julio sent all this beer and spent all this money, we're like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help you. <laughs> yeah, but I'll use it in cooking. I don't know. Uh, Brian Shar, go ahead, please. Uh, Julio, I have to ask my standard question: Are you in a homebrew club? I am not. You you are a lone wolf. Yes. All right, that's <laughs> that's good. How long have you been brewing? 
Oh, uh, so I was doing the math. It's uh, 13 years. So I started Damn. about 08, yeah. Nice. Wow. It was, uh, well, let me see, freshman year of college? Nice. <laughs> Well, I mean, clearly you, it shows that you've had 13, your beer shows you've had 13 years of experience, which, which is real good. Uh, so the, the first thing, I mean, you know this, the big bottle with the swivel top is totally cool for sending to us. Uh, a lot of competitions are going to be like, what, what is this? And they shouldn't give you, it shouldn't affect your score, but weird things can affect your score. And non-standard, receiving a non-standard bottle uh, is one of those things that can kind of throw people off. So, I mean, as much as a pain in the ass to fill 12 ounce bottles, uh, if you were sending it to a competition, you'd probably want to, want to fill some 12 ounce bottles. Uh, but it's still, you know, it was a nice, nice hiss. There was some carbonation when, when I opened that up, uh, aroma, uh, low aroma overall, which is appropriate for this style. Uh, I got, uh, sort of a low level of malt, a uh, low level of uh, fermentation fruitiness, uh, low caramel, uh, 9 out of 12. And a, a beer like this, I mean, th this is uh, uh, looking at the commercial examples, right? Uh, uh, best bitter commercial example is uh, London Pride. And London Pride, when it's fresh, the sad thing is when we get it in the U.S., unless you're going to like a real specialty beer bar or beer store, and maybe you guys out east probably get, get slightly fresher, uh, British beers than we do. But I mean, we in California, by the time London Pride gets here, most of the time it's so care, so oxidized and caramel and cardboard, it's not even worth it. But damn, good, good, fresh London Pride is amazing. And it does have a little bit of that as that, that kind of aroma from from the fermentation. Uh, and I'll, I'll be curious to hear later on, like uh, uh, what what yeast you used and what, what you did with that. Uh, appearance, it was uh, moderately hazy. Uh, at least the bottle that I got, uh, low but persistent head, and that's you know the hallmark of the style too, right? It's uh, a lot of these beers at low carbonation. These British beers, they don't have these giant heroic heads. They have like a low head, but it lasts a real long time. Uh, and yours did that. Uh, color is sort of an amber, light copper. Uh, gave it two out of three for appearance, and that one point was for the the haziness. And you know, we can, we, I think we can, one of the things we want to talk about later. So the flavor was uh, initially a medium low level. Uh, malt, you get sort of a caramel with a, a deeper undertone that isn't roasty or toasty, but it's kind of complex. Uh, I'll be curious what your malt bill was. I'm kind of curious if it might be victory or something like that. But there's some complexity in, in, in the malt here. Um, in mid palate, hot bitterness comes up the balance. I get uh, sort of a low earthy hop flavor uh, as well. Uh, it's balanced maybe slightly to the malt in a long, pleasant finish. Uh, uh, and definitely get uh, with the flavor as well as the aroma, that kind of characteristic British yeast fermentation flavor that people like to characterize as, quote, fruity, unquote. But it's just it's the flavor of, of good, uh, healthy British yeast. Uh, and that was 14 out of 20. Uh, mouthfeel, uh, uh, four out of five, uh, no warming, low body, uh, low carbonation. It's expected for the style. Creamy rather than astringency, or, or than astringent. But having said that, in the finish, I did get like a slight astringency. Uh, maybe from water adjustment, I'm not quite sure. But I did, you know, that, that's knocked that down from five to a four. It's a, a little bit of an astringency in the finish. Uh, overall impression gave it a seven for a total of 36. Uh, I like this beer a lot. You know, the, uh, the slight, you know, if you're just, it's kind of, this is one of those beers where it's so light and there's so much going on, but it's all going on at kind of a subtle level, if that makes sense. Uh, that even like a little bit of stuff being off can kind of throw it off. And to me, that kind of, Maybe it's just my, you know, my palate just now. Maybe it's just my bottle, uh, but I that that astringent at the end made me wonder: hell, is there maybe too much water adjustment? Did you adjust your water at all? Am I just trying to think of things that are wrong? I, I, I don't know. But, uh, having said that, this is still definitely in the very good range. I like this. 
Yeah. Uh, and I still have a second bottle in my fridge, and I'm I'm not getting rid of that other than through through my mouth uh, to and consume then, that and drink that at a later time. And then out of his penis. That's how the rest <laughs> yeah. of that works. I, I didn't, right. I didn't yeah. want to say that, yeah. but since you brought it up, I mean, <laughs> that's usually where pee goes. That's right. That's why it's called a penis. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Did you, did you give final score, Brian? I, I didn't. Uh, the uh, fi- final score is 36. 36. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, before we get into it, I mean, I... I echo a lot of of you know what everybody said. It it is kind of a tough style to do and to do really well. Yeah. Um. I I do think that. I don't know. I mean, it maybe it's well, is that a little too bitter, or maybe that's the astringency you guys are talking about. Yeah, At I, the end, I, I would like, like a little more like nice clean bitterness. You know, mm-hmm. um, just get get that bitter impression and a little more kind of caramel maltiness uh, to play off of that. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I w- I would like a little more malt in the in the in the in the mouth and the body. A little bit of a little bit more malt flavor. What are you doing? And maybe that's also a function of it being a little like a watered down version, per, so to speak, of a an ESB style. Where like yeah. I started out trying to be something, and then you just, you can't just lighten up an ESB and it's suddenly a best bitter. You need to make your own. You know, I mean, there is mm-hmm. a lot of crossover, of course, but you can, you have to, you know, it's its own animal for sure. It is, but I think that I think the 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 grain flavoring, all that kind of stuff, is very good. The flavor is is good. Oh yeah, it just needs, you know, it needs a little tweak. Anyway, Julio, let's yeah. let's answer some of these guys' questions. Uh, sure. Can you run us through your recipe real fast, please? All right. So this was a uh, eight pounds Maris Otter, uh, eight ounces of caramel ten. Uh, eight ounces of victory, four ounces of caramel 120, and that was it. Uh, I hops. nailed the victory. Woo-hoo! Yes, you did. <laughs> I, 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 I smirked immediately. I was like, wow, that's that's really good that you put yes. that out. <laughs> and, and then for hops, uh, East Kent Goldings, the two ounces and one ounce of uh, Halotel Blanc. Okay. All right. And what about water adjustments? That was Brian Shars. Uh, so I, I think I did add some gypsum to it. Um, I've been a little concerned that I've been using Poland spring water, which is, you know, something I would drink, you know, typically, but that's what I've been using for beer. So I, I haven't done adjustments to that since recently. So I'm, I'm trying to see if I can add something that would, um, clean it up a bit. Cause I was having a little bit of issues with like mouthfeel. Like it wasn't mm-hmm. as, as carbonated as I'd like it. Not with this yeah. style, at least. Water is how, important how you... in this kind of a beer too. You want it to be right. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. And it's one of those things where... I, I get as I, I've like everyone, everyone else, pretty much. I've had times where I've lived wherever and you just go get the the drinking water, not the distilled water, or the RO water. And think, OK, I'll just use this as a base. But unless you know exactly have some general idea what the minerals are in there, adding more minerals can be it can kind of exacerbate problems rather than solve them. I, I know I did sense. check. Uh, sort of their water profile so it mm-hmm. it wouldn't the things that i was adding wasn't uh out of bounds it mm-hmm. was something that could have probably fit in um but it, it probably just didn't work with this you know uh water as you're saying yeah yeah could could be okay what, I don't know. Uh, what kind what kind of yeast did you use on this beer? oh uh safil uh uh oh, really? so four yeah wow so a uh, uh, dry yeast uh so this and uh well, I should keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> it, it attenuated very well. We'll mm. say that. So, mm. yeah. yeah, it did attenuate really well. Um, what do you think, Brian? Would you would you tell him to to back away from that victory malt a little bit, or do you did you like the complexity that added? No, I I really like the complexity the victory malt added. It's not like a huge amount. It was it was a few ounces, right, Julio? Yeah, eight What's ounces. That? Yeah, yeah, and I think that's really that's appropriate for a beer like this. I mean, you you need whether it's something you're just trying to drink yourself because you like it or because you're in competition, you need a little something to help you stand out. And, you know, roast toast is really kind of inappropriate in this style, but I think victory gives you that little extra sort of undertone, that little oomph that if you don't use victory, a lot of folks aren't going to do that. It'll help you stand out in, in competition. I, I liked it. Oh man. Yeah, because I, I needed to add something because uh, everything I was looking at was mostly like Maris Otter and some and and uh, and caramel, and I just needed to add like at least another you know bit of complexity to to you know make yeah. it a little different. Yeah, you're right. 
Yeah, it, make, it yeah. makes sense. And, you know, Maris yeah. Otter, you can't go wrong with Maris Otter in pretty much any style. That's just great malt. Um, but you're right. If, if, what you're, if, if everyone else is doing Maris Otter and caramel, you put a little Maris Otter, caramel, and a little victory, you know, hey, you stand out. Yeah, some some style, some of them will use uh, you know caramel and, and and use some darker malts to give it a richer color. I mean, you can go all the way up to SRM sixteen on yeah. these beers; they can get pretty richly kind of coppery colored. You know, um, there's a lot of different ways you can let them express themselves. Um, I was wondering though, how you do you do anything to try to clarify the beer? Do you use any? Um, uh, Whirlflock. So, yeah. So, okay. So, so yeah. Whirlflock in the kettle. You know, you can use uh, things like either uh, uh, gelatin finings or you know, like a biofine or anything like, you know, different kinds of fining agents to try to get that, that clarity a little brighter. Um, and With it, most it, uh, other yeasts that I use, typically it clears out. Um, but this one, uh, it's, it's the first time I've used, uh, you know, SO4. So I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's why it's, you know, hanging around, you yeah, know, all, it's all, not, the, uh, all that, uh, haze is definitely attributed to the yeast. Yeah. It's not super crazy hazy, but, uh, yeah, gelatin will definitely drop that out get a good dose of that in there <laughs> it might take away a little bit of the hop if you're planning to use gelatin you want to bump up the hops just a little bit you know mm-hmm. 10 per 10 percent or something but uh yeah that's one one trick it, it does work really well we end up with kind of a goopy you know uh mess at the bottom of your fermenter that you need to deal with so i not really a goopy mess it, it just kind of solidifies <laughs> and congeals and goes to the bottom you just yeah. have to avoid it when you're rack get to rack pretty carefully <laughs> yeah for sure uh well hula do you have any more questions for the guys did they answer everything so uh basically uh look at my water and possibly um Bump up the caramel sweetness. And you know what? I would consider the Safale, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. And if you like how that works, you know, there's a lot of advantages to using Safale. You can really pitch a lot of it and not have to worry too much about a starter or anything. You might look at like one of the White Labs British options or some of the other yeast companies and kind of, you know, maybe talk to, uh, uh, do you go to like a local homebrew store or like order online or? Yeah, order on, online. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm basically, and, you know, in a silo by myself. <laughs> and that's cool. You know, we, we all we all do that. But you might you know, go to like morebeer.com and just kind of check out some of those uh, those White Labs uh, British choices and kind of see. I don't know, I'm not there are so many yeasts anymore. I, I can't like just just bust out a yeast number like oh go get a oh, yeah. wlp blank can't do uh, it. but there's a lot of different british british yeast and you might just kind of play with that no i agree i agree with you most of the times yeah. i do uh, uh do liquid uh yeast and i you know build a start and i do all that mm-hmm. it's just that um i, I actually looked at a, a a video recently by like a, not even this uh um dry yeast brand but it was another one saying hey mm-hmm. uh, do you know the advantages of actually using dry yeast just because they, they can pack in a lot more cells and, yeah. you know, a smaller, you know, package. And, and also uh, they're not prone to damage in the same way. So th- there's, mm-hmm. it was just something that I was just looking into to see if, if uh, dry yeast is viable. A, a lot of, you know, um, commercial places, they, you know, thrive on it. So it was yeah. just oh, yeah. seeing, you know, what's possible. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with dry yeast. And especially in 2021, I mean, yeah. Yeah. 1995, that was maybe a different story. Yeah. Yeah. When I started back in 2008, same idea. It's like, same I, thing, I want man. to use liquid. <laughs> well, you know, and, yep. and it's, I always go back to, to, they pick the, the yeast strain for the dry yeast, depending on how well it survives and rehydrates rather than the flavors that mm-hmm. it gives. But I wouldn't have been able to guess that this was a dry yeast or safe ale because it all, no, I it, wouldn't have thought it that. depends on how you manipulate your fermentation and how good your ingredients are. I wouldn't have guessed. I mean, thinking about it now, Okay, maybe it was a little too clean, and I wonder how much you could have, how much more you could have impacted this beer to make it taste on style even more so by the yeast, you know, selection. But I mean, definitely play around with it. Try everything. I mean, now this is the yeah. time when you're a home brewer, fucking yeah. throw the throw the kitchen sink at the damn thing. See what happens. You know, split it up. Do these little one gallon, whatever you want to do, man. Um, Say fail. I think it worked for this beer. I think if you do yeah. it again, it'll be just fine too. Maybe you just manipulate the fermentation temp a little bit, maybe drive some of those esters. But yeah, I think I might do it yeah. a little bit warmer because that one I, I kept pretty chilly. I, I, I was maintaining that you know close to like sixty-two. I oh say. yeah, uh, Seven, okay. seventy-two. 
Yeah, that, yeah at least sixty-eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I don't know if they go in the seventies, but if you can control it to the high sixties, <laughs> I'd probably do that. Well, look, I'm uh, I'm not a coward, guys. <laughs> I'm not afraid of shit. I will dab uh, on I, every single. I, I'm afraid of everything, so yeah, I'm not going to go to seventy-two for that. Yeah. No, I think yeah. This was the, the one beer where I flipped every convention I I normally do. Yeah, you know, I, well, I and... usually do warmer. I do you know everything. You know, it, this is why I wanted to send it to. It's like all right, let, let's see how have I been bullshitting myself this whole time, or, or like let let's see if we just send something. Well, and, <laughs> but this is also the hard part about giving feedback, mm. corrective feedback on a beer yeah. like this because you, you didn't you didn't do any of the things that we're normally commenting on, so it's. Mm-hmm. It, it, I feel at least, and maybe maybe the Brian's don't, um, but I feel like, well, if I say this, it's not what he did anyways. So of course it tastes like this because this is the this was the process. So it's like, you know, I don't know. But hopefully you got something out of it. Oh, definitely. Oh, uh-huh. I, uh, it, it's it it put a. Uh... You know, at least different palates into it, where it's like, okay, n- now I understand what other people are tasting from it. Okay, yeah, I, awesome. I agree with the temperature suggestion too. I think that's a good idea because a little fruitiness is going to pull away from some of those like harsher, like more even the astringent kind of what's coming across is a little astringency in the finish. If you had a little bit of fruitiness in there, blending with it, it's going to accent that that carameliness and and let it kind of shine a little better. Definitely. Yeah. yeah I was sure. just scared about just the, the mouthfeel of it. Like it was already uh, uh, low. I think I had, it. uh, this is probably a 3.5% beer, maybe less than that, honestly. Yeah. So you know what? I like... packed a lot of flavor into a 3.5% yeah. beer. It's <laughs> yeah. not watery. It's not, you know, a lot of times beers like this are limp and watery and just kind of uninteresting. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, all right, I've all drink some of this. Let me move on to, to something that tastes better. Yeah. This tastes really good. Yeah. You know, you managed to get a lot of flavor and a lot of aroma into, you know, a three and a half percent beer. And that's that's something that's an achievement. And there's a reason why you know, we gave you a score that's in the, you know, like the high, very good, uh, you know, that that range. I mean, it is very good. Oh, All right. Then I'm, I'm thrilled about it. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. OK, there you go. Uh, all right. Well, if that's it, we'll, we'll let you split. Yep. I, I have a yep. feeling we'll be we'll be talking to you again sometime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 Maybe. You'll never know. I can't imagine. Yeah. All right, Julio. Thanks, man. Sure. Take it easy. Thanks, Julio. All right, we're going to take a quick break, everybody. When we come back, we're going to have yet another beer and another home brewer to speak to. Hang on, everybody. It's Dr. Homebrew. We'll be right back. I'm sorry to tell you this. But we're going to have to pour you out. Back to Dr. Homebrew. All right, welcome back, everybody. We have John on the line here. John, welcome to Dr. Homebrew. And more importantly, uh, thank you for sending us beer. Good job, John. Of course, of course. John, I think John has a nicer background than than any of us. I mean, my, mine I have to obscure with the fake trees. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I was noticing JP's background changed since the last time we saw him too. He's got Luke Skywalker up there in the background. That's right, man. Hey, I'm. Yeah. Know that. Oh, here's my Luke Skywalker picture. You know, oh, inside it's, it's not, a little blurry, a little out of focus. Aren't you yeah, a that's little how short it is. to be a stormtrooper. Oh, yeah, hey, there's a signature on there. What? And there's a certificate of authenticity. Um, Rad, dude. The cool story. Nice. It's a good story. When I was like, oh, I don't know, 12 or 14, maybe, I'm going to assume, something like that. Um, it, it was like a like a, one of the home, sh- it was probably Home Shopping Network or something like that, where they were like selling signed, framed, mounted, you know, th- this <laughs> thing, right? And I'm like, oh my god! Actually, 1996. So I was older than that. I was probably too old to be doing what I'm about to tell you. I did. Um, I really wanted it, and I, (laughs) I I happened to see a receipt on the table at my mom's house, Um, and that was back when receipts still had the credit card, like the full credit card number printed on it. Oh my god! Yeah. So I so I got the credit card number off my mom's. Fucking thing, man! My receipt, and uh, <laughs> I, I credit card frauded her for it, and um, uh, you know she must to- be very proud. Uh, well, I don't know. She's not, <laughs> no, I don't think she. I think she was very upset. Uh, but I mean, uh, 
I don't know. That was my mom. She was probably, she was never like she would never get mad. She would just get disappointed, and then um, yeah, I don't know. That was it. And then you actually made it. a good investment, son. And and uh, you know <laughs> now in the in the twenty twenties, it's worth a lot more than it was worth in nineteen ninety six or whatever. Is it? I don't know. Tell me. I'm sure. I'm I'll sure sell it. it I'll sell it right now. Actually, I should should I wait till he dies and then sell it, or is the market better before no. when he's in the like current you know Twitter? Just sphere. keep it forever, and then you know. When you die, just will it to me or something. I don't know. Oh, that's. I like how you think you're going to outlive me. Smashers of the (laughs) level. I just want to. Whenever I see Luke, whenever I see uh, Luke in like that that stormtrooper uniform thing, that just always makes me makes me laugh. It makes me happy. Shut them all down. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right, John, you sent over an imperial stat with bourbon and coconut. Is this a reoccurring theme for you? Do you have you made this before? First time. No, so this is my first attempt at kind of a bigger beer. Um, I really haven't brewed anything over like 065 or so. So, okay. um, yeah, so this is kind of first go at it. All right. Wow. I love it, man. I love it. Why? Why an imperial stout with bourbon and coconut as your first run? I guess if you're gonna if you're gonna do it, you might as well just do it. Yeah, go big. So right. uh, there you go. usually uh, we have my cousins over for Christmas, and uh, we kind of uh, love to do some holiday stuff themed beers but uh i never did anything big so i really wanted to try my hand at something a little bit bigger nice man i like that i like that yeah. good old family aspect going there you go okay cool well uh brian Shar, why don't you start us out here with this uh lovely category 33 b definitely so yeah john good good job uh on your first big beer i mean you think you did a, a fantastic uh fantastic job here are you in a homebrew club uh no frequent the local homebrew club or homebrew store but uh still lone wolf where uh but local uh like where where are you located uh so maryland in between uh baltimore and dc uh maryland homebrew cool. is my local shop yeah they're awesome nice yeah and there's a lot there's got to be a lot of great places to go between baltimore and dc too just to have good beer and good food and everything else for sure, we got uh, Sapwood Cellars and those guys uh, in, so it's kind of uh, it's kind of blowing up with with good beer places. Nice, very nice. Yeah, so yeah, I really like this beer uh, uh, aroma, and and I think over, overall, just kind of set the, my score sheet down for two seconds. One of the things I really liked about this beer was that it was subtle and balanced. It was not a beer that like slapped me across the face with with bourbon or coconut or vanilla. It's like everything was kind of subtle. It was all there and it was all harmonious. Uh, But none of it was like, we got to go super big with, with some of these ingredients. So the, the initial aroma, uh, I got some toasted coconut followed by like a hint of bourbon uh, and some, some dark uh, slash roast malt. Uh, It's complex and subtle. The, The bourbon's not beating me over the head. Uh, get some low vanilla there from the wood. Didn't really get a lot of wood aroma. No off aromas. So that's 10 out of 12. Uh, appearance, 3 out of 3. Uh, color is extremely dark brown. If the sun wasn't setting outside my living room window, uh, if I wasn't holding that up next to the sun to see the, the, the brown, uh, it would be essentially black. And yeah, JP is holding uh, for anyone watching this live on Facebook or later on on YouTube. Yeah, you can see it's very dark brown, but it's like it was, there's almost nothing that's a- in life that's actually like all the way black. Most things are like just super dark brown and you just don't shine enough light on them to know. Uh, so the, the color is really great. Uh, head is low and persistent. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to get. Uh, head sometimes in beer that's this this strong you know especially when you've got like it's it's been in wood and it's had bourbon uh so the fact that it's it's there and it's persistent is really good hard to determine how clear it is with a beer that's this dark but it looking kind of the edges of the glass it looks clear so three out of three uh flavor wise first impression is coconut and then dark malt uh, slash roast slash chocolate. Get a little chocolate character there. Uh, hot bitterness comes up to almost balance mid palate, but this is a beer that to me is still malt focused and it's kind of balanced a little more toward the malt. Um, no discernible hop flavor, but that, that's okay. It's not a style that requires a giant amount of hop flavor. Uh, well attenuated, 
you know, it's it's difficult when you're brewing, whether it's a, a wood aged or not. You're you're brewing something that's going to be 10, 11, 12 percent. Uh, you know, if this is the first time you've done that, then, you know, kudos to you, man, because that's it's difficult to get big beers to attenuate sometimes and the, to get it to be well attenuated the first time around uh, shows you have some some con- you have mastery and control over your fermentation process. Uh, and that that's really important. Uh, finish is long and balanced. I gave it 16 out of 20 for flavor. Uh, Mouthfeel, 5 out of 5. Uh, it's definitely warming uh, in a very pleasant way, kind of right here in the chest. You know, it's weird how sometimes warming is different. It, it shouldn't be different, right? I mean, it's, it's alcohol and you're ingesting it and it should always be the same thing, right? But sometimes warming is strange. Sometimes warming is like in your ears and sometimes you get it right here, but you get like a nice warming just mm-hmm. right here in the ch- uh, upper chest. Brian uh, Seinfeld starting a stand up act. <laughs> yeah, let's work, keep working that angle there. Uh, no, it's not a comedy. It's just sometimes you're right. No, I know. I know. You, you, you think that alcohol? I mean, alcohol is alcohol, right? right. You think that it's going to have? It, it should always have the same effect at a certain concentration, and it doesn't. And that's part of the the mystery and and fun of of beer or wine or anything like that. You know, yep. if you, you you it's it's just different, and it has different effects on you. And it's not always clear why, and it's just kind of fun. Uh, you know, it's uh, a full body, medium low carbonation, uh, creamy, five out of five mouthfeel. Uh, overall impression, uh, I gave it eight for a total score of 42. Uh, this is a really amazing beer. I, I love the subtlety uh, with regard to the, uh, the bourbon and the wood aging and stuff. It, it's if I had a, a a thing to change, it's almost a little bit too subtle to me in some ways. Uh, and I I appreciate a wood aged, you know, bourbon based beer that is not like clubbing me over the head with bourbon and wood, right? It's because we've all had those, right? And it's like you're going to put something in a barrel that had you're going to put it in with bourbon. It's going to sit there for years. That's going to come out like, holy crap, you know, that's, oh, that's satin wood. You know, there's some bourbon. And it, that's, that's good to a point, but it, you know, it lacks subtlety and complexity. But I almost wonder if yours is a little bit too subtle, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So maybe a little more wood time, a little more bourbon. But overall, I mean, 42 is uh, in the right, right in the middle of the excellent range. Yeah, um, let I'm me- going to be, drinking the rest of this uh, uh, while Brian uh, Cooper's talking. Let me, <clears throat> let me ask you a question, Shard. Do you think it's a function of, of, I don't look, I don't think this is the case, but do you think it's maybe too much coconut? And at, cause, no. cause I get coconut all the way through. And then at the end, it almost acts like, like a, a sweeper or like a Hoover just hoovers up a lot of what I would consider the, the what I should be tasting in the finish. So I think if, for me, I, I think the coconut maybe sort of extends a little bit too much and maybe clean and maybe keeps everything subdued. I don't think it's it, too it, much it flavor. Could, it it's too be. long. I, and I, I know that I makes no sense. I'm, I don't know that I'm perceiving that, okay. but I understand your point. And I think as coconut flavor, coconut's an oil. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not a chemist. You know, I, with the chemistry I know, I know from, I know from brewing and LED lighting is kind of funny, uh, but I two Same. totally different things, uh, you know, I'm, but I'm not a chemist and I, but I got to think that, you know, maybe if you're getting a lot of coconut all the way through, then maybe that oil is interacting some way with the wood or the vanilla to maybe, maybe uh, keep that down a little, you know, I, I don't know. It's a good, good point, JP. Okay. Uh, Cooper, go ahead, please. Tell me I'm wrong. All right. I will tell you you're wrong. No, uh, I will just for fun, but <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the, uh, had a nice bottle. It was very, very cleanly labeled with like printing on it and you could read and understand exactly what the beer was and how to judge it. So that was cool uh, from a judging perspective. Um, so it's declared as an Imperial stout with bourbon and coconut as a 33 B, which is a wood aged, uh, a specialty wood aged beer. So um I'm going to be looking for both the, you know, the, the coconut and the, 
uh, the bourbon and some wood aging uh, generally. But uh, yeah, so oh, of course, you know, usually bourbon is is aged on on wood too. So <laughs> you know, someone could get really crazy and just add bourbon to beer, and, and then you know. Uh, anyway, I'm well. We'll talk about the recipe later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, richly chocolatey nose. Uh, nice night. Really first, just clean presentation. Nice, clean fermentation. Really nicely done there. Uh, and with a big beer like this, that's not easy. Uh, pleasant coconut al- alongside that um, rich chocolatiness. There's not any like real roast sticking out. It's just pure, like, you know, dark to medium, dark chocolate. There's just smooth. And uh there's a definitely smooth and firm alcohol uh, in the nose as well. It's kind of a medium, medium high level, but it's really not poking out harshly at all. It's like, and there are differences in alcohol. Like alcohol can be pure ethanol is one thing. When you brew, you're not making just pure ethanol. You're making a blend of different alcohols. There are always going to be a mix of some higher alcohols and even, you know, uh, just you know probably methanol mixed in every you know just f- small small fractions of it but every little fraction of a percent of something else that's in there and bumping up makes the impression of the alcohol harsher not only in the aroma and the flavor but also the mouthfeel and the warming aspect so i think i'll get well anyway i just wanted to say that <laughs> um on back to the nose um low bourbon character overall and not not really much in the way of a, a barrel character uh biscuity malt alongside the chocolate there is some slight kind of nice warm coffee um you know kind of medium roast coffee uh some moderate fruity esters in there really not getting anything in the way of hops um with everything else that's going on here um appearance wise it is a rich blackish brown color not totally opaque looks clear at the edges um has a low low tan head that stuck around quite well, despite the fairly obvious strength and, and the oils that are there. Uh, the bubbles that are there are mostly finer in uh, size. And uh, so, but uh, yeah, I've been sipping on this one for a while. The head dropped down <laughs> and it leaves just a little collar there uh, that's still kind of perking up every once in a while. As you, as you kind of swirl it, it'll, it'll pop up a little bit. Um, flavor-wise, just richly malty with smooth, semi-sweet chocolate notes, most prominent, uh, low hot bitterness, clean ale fermentation. Uh, the clean, lightly toasted coconut flavor adds a lot here and really complements the style. The bourbon note, again, is very low to me uh, with only a faint, what you could call a wood-like character. You get a little bit of a, something that seems like, oh, maybe a little oak, but at the very last, like, finish and as it as it dries out and goes down the throat then you have you're left with a little bit of that in the aftertaste um but i think that the the yeah you're probably right that the oils from the coconut just kind of coat your tongue and 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 cover up some of that other stuff and don't let it shine through as much maybe but uh like uh i'm not saying back off the coconut because i really do like the level that the coconut's at here yes same um it's a semi-sweet finish i would say Definitely balance of the malt, um, and uh, there's a yeah, slight uh, slight bit of roast, just a touch, and and maybe I got like kind of a, a very faint floral hop flavor. There's not much in the way of hops here. Um, the bitterness is again low, but it's it's just kind of out of the way, and some of the bitterness is coming from the malts, but it's at a good level for this beer. It's not coming across too sweetly or too too bitter. It just no, oh, that's right, that works. Uh, mouthfeel medium full-bodied uh, with low sm- low smooth alcohol warming low creaminess uh, i'm not getting any astringency or any kind of biting quality at all it's a nice easy sipping beer <laughs> but then i challenged myself i like okay let's uh i had to finish the sample and judge something i was like okay and then i took kind of a fast sip and i was like okay yeah that's that is it does <laughs> let you know that it's it's got some substantial it got your ass it. dude blasted you from across the country um yeah that that you can't pound it obvious strength no. there sure when you can uh, but you'll you know the up. carbonation was kind of medium maybe maybe medium high it had a real good hiss when i when i opened it up the pretty strong hiss uh at least on the first bottle i didn't really pay attention when i opened this one but um it was like really really okay this is a pretty spritzy beer for such a big one and uh but it's not you know, giving any like harsh carbonic bite or anything really either, but it's noticeably like carbonate carbon dioxide just keeps 
pushing up and it's it's there very firmly uh maybe a tad too much but it's not not hurting it too badly really uh overall this is a very pleasant drinking specialty wood aged imperial stout with a lot going for it uh it hits a lot of the key components for style very pleasant coconut i don't know how you processed that and what you did to it um it's you know pretty nice as it is um standing up to this very robust style and i've had some coconut stout. coconut just really does work nicely with stout when you do it right an imperial stout yeah i'm really i've had some other ones that are just really you know fantastic too it's like i finally got these uh you know like you know the the belvita breakfast things and mm-hmm. i was in uh south dakota with my mom those things wrong, and dude. uh yeah she she has she's like have you ever tried the coconut ones and i'm not like i don't seek out coconut i'm not a coconut mm-hmm. guy i don't eat german chocolate cake even though I speak German, I, you know, I, I just like, okay, just you can keep the coconut. It was like, no, just try it. Like, okay. So, so, you know, it's like had this nice toasted coconut quality to these biscuits and I'm not advertising for that product. I'm just, it's a nice flavor when it's done right. And it's got that nice edge of, of a, a toasted quality along with, you know, with a biscuit, which is a, a bread product, you know, along with malt components, it's like kind of similar. It's, it's, it expresses itself well against that. Um, you know, maybe you could buy some of those and dip them in the stout here and see how that tastes. That would be fun. <laughs> um, you know, the other thing I say is that the, 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 the bourbon is obscure. The bourbon is there is pretty obscure. I'm not sure, um, you know, does it need it? Can you, can you do this as just a coconut only stout and, and skip the bourbon or, uh, crazy, you know, declare it as a spice or vegetable beer. Um, there, there is a little bourbon there, but I'm not sure that it's, it's either, up to the level where it needs to be. And I'm wondering what it would taste like if it was, would it be better? Would it be, you know, less interesting? You know, I don't know. Um, the, um, you know, to- you, you could maybe if you toasted the coconut, I think even toasting it just a little bit more might, if it's already toasted, uh, bring up that nice richness of the coconut. I just love the way it's expressing itself and even a little, you know, um, it's it's so smooth. It could stand to even like with the the smoothness of the beer, and it's just everything smooth. Give it a little more like aggressiveness almost in that way. Uh, or you could also bring up the uh, you know kind of a smooth oakiness and a and a bit more booze. You could definitely get away with a bit more booze. I don't like beers that are just over the top booze only, and uh, that's all you taste, and it just you know it doesn't it, it it overpowers the beer. In this case, it's just it's there very faintly alongside the beer style and get a little bit of it. And that's a nice balance, but it, to me, it's a little too loaded to, you know, you, you could declare it and it it's, I don't know. I had, I had trouble getting a big booze character, but JP, you're a booze guy. I'm not really a yeah. booze drinking guy. No, I, I think right. the booze is, is there. I think it's there. Yeah, I wouldn't go any there. farther. I want to, I want to learn how it was added and what kind, okay. because that does make a difference. So I landed at a 38 on this beer. I thought it was it was excellent, and uh, you know I really enjoyed it for what it was. And you could drink a lot of this uh, over a you know in a on a winter's day in front of a fire, and just like wow, that's a nice sipper. So I just as to are you, style are you for hitting me, on John right now? Yeah, sure, it's got a nice. <laughs> you, you know, I, I, I'm not sure, sure I'd want to drink. This is a great beer. I'm not sure how much of a lot of this I could drink or should drink. Right. No, it's it's a right. dangerous one for sure. But uh, no, it's definitely tasty. Were you were you finished, Coop? I I, I was. Yeah. Right. Thirty eight, and uh, I I would yeah I would drink a bottle of it and then stop myself because yeah. then that's going to be a problem. Yeah. I <laughs> I personally think that there's enough bourbon in here, uh, but again, I want to I want to figure out how it was added and what yeah. kind. Um, the oak I think could come up a little bit. I think the the coconut could come back just a little bit, but it's one of those like micro adjustments where if you go too 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 far back, you're gonna blow the whole thing because it's a really nice addition. Um, I also think that there's you could maybe add something a little bit later later on in like the palate, like a little more uh, chocolate malt or like a little more. Uh, for me, I wanted a little more to carry through the end, but I don't know if that's a function of in for my palate for my taste. The coconut, like I said, is sort of coming through, and I wonder if it's sort of just like squashing things at the late palate. But uh, anyway, let's hear from you, John. Yeah, what about adding some chocolate or some or some yeah. coffee or Pale something chocolate. different? I thought like yeah. this this beer sort of I, I think would really do well with a nice coffee addition, some cold brew coffee or something like that. But um, anyway, let's go over your recipe, and then we'll go over your process and, and figure out 
what we're even talking about because we might be totally wrong. No, no, you guys were like really spot on on, on like 99% of this. So, uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> this is a 6.5 gallon recipe uh, brewed in July, July 11th uh, this year. Um, wow. And actually, uh, since I hadn't done this before, I want to give a shout out to uh, Brandon. So he was a guy uh, that was on episode 174, the infamous uh, coconut hammock episode. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you guys remember that one? Uh, so, you know, I, I loosely based my recipe because I was kind of flying blind uh, on that recipe, uh, which yeah. he scored excellent. So so I figured it was a good starting point. Nice, man. Um, That's cool. Yeah, That's yeah, it was nice. Uh, so water chemistry is built up off tap, uh, added K-meta to reduce chlorine, chloramines, uh, gypsum, calcium chloride, and pickling lime. Uh, my mash was 5.51. Calcium was super high because of the pickling lime. So that was 225. Mag at five, uh, sodium 13, sulfate 36, chloride 104. So almost the three to one chloride to sulfate ratio. Um, the grist was Maris Otter, 68%, malted rye, 6%, uh, flake dose, 5%, roasted barley, 5%. 3% each of crystal 40, crystal 60, and crystal 120. Uh, cane sugar was 3%, um, 350 Lovo Bond chocolate at 2%, and crisp pale chocolate 220 love at 2%. Um, That's a lot from- of small malt additions. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and you know, and you know, it works. And it, it's interesting is that the advice we always give people and the advice you always hear is keep it simple with your malt bill. But you know what? This malt bill tastes real good. Usually a proponent of trying to keep it simple for like pale ales and whatnot. But, uh, but everybody that's done pretty well on this show has kind of had pretty complex for like these bigger stouts. So I kind of went with that kitchen mm-hmm. stuff approach. Um, hops were simple, 40 grams of Magnum uh, at 60, nothing else. Um, mash was a double infusion, uh, beta sac rest at 146 for an hour, alpha sac rest at, uh, 154 for an hour. And, uh, it landed at 1.100 OG, uh, attenuated down to 1.024. And, uh, I used to follow five, two packets and two liter starter, um, oxygenated and then as far as handling uh or uh, fermented at 65 to 66 did a de-rest at about 80 percent attenuation um and then cold crash and primary pressure transferred to a purge keg and then this is where i kind of uh threw in all the adjuncts so inside of the keg i had 1.3 pounds of uh toasted coconut i did it at 350 in the oven um, and I kind of had that in a hot bag. So I kind of transferred on top of that. Um, I also had one and a half Madagascar vanilla beans that were gutted, um, in the keg. And then, uh, as kind of, uh, Cooper was alluding to, uh, f- I added 5.5 ounces of Woodford reserve double Oak to the keg. So I, I, this, obviously this is worthy of discussion. So I had some inside information. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't mean to spoil that, but yeah, yeah. You know. no, it's very subtle, but I've certainly picked up on it. Um, so yeah, you know, I just, I feel like I've gotten myself into trouble with Oak before. Um, and so I figured if I add like a Woodford reserve double Oak, it won't over Oak it, but it'll still have enough Oak so that I can declare it in this specialty category. That's a good thought process. I like that. It is yeah, a good I, thought I process. Have to agree. I you like. Oak, I like you can Woodford oak it further. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you can oak ahead. it further. I I like Woodford. I feel like Woodford is too mellow. It's too smooth for something like this. Yeah, because uh, you know, like Cooper was saying, you could add more bourbon. I don't think you can add more bourbon. I think you can add different bourbon. But I would also take. I would get cubes and I would soak them in the bourbon, and then put them on for a month and not taste it. Just let it sit for a first month. Cause what you can, what happens when you, when you do oaking, especially with like cubes it, or with anything, the first couple of weeks, you're like, Oh shit, this, this is too, it's too much. And you freak out. But a lot of the sediment in the char sort of falls to the bottom where your dip tube is and you pick it up and it's just this weird like thing. But I mean, oak cubes, you can let them go, you know, four months. And you're something not, a little gnarlier. Like, what do you think about like a, a rye or something? You could do a yeah. You could definitely do a rye for sure, uh, like a rye whiskey. But um, you know, I, I think I think it's just something because you, John, you, I'm imagining you drink Woodford. 
Yeah, sure. Yeah, people don't just have Woodford Double Oak like hanging around because they want to brew with it. Um, but you know what I mean? Like for, <laughs> for me, it's just it, it's a very smooth, rounded bourbon. But you can get some bourbons a little pokey, a little bit more sweeter. Um, you know, maybe you should try a, a, a beefier bourbon. Okay. Okay. Um, if you want to, it, again, this is all that with a caveat. If you really enjoy the way this is coming through, then do it. I would also personally reduce the coconut to a pound. Okay. And try that. That was a, that was a lot. Yeah. Was pound a and, was it a pound and a half? Yeah. Uh, uh yeah. For, 1.3 pounds. One almost. Yeah. One and a third. That's yeah. I, That's yeah. a heavy addition. That's a lot of coconut in yeah. a beer. Five gallons. Uh, how long was the coconut on the beer? Uh, five days. Five days. I mean, yeah. shit. I wonder if you went like three quarters of a pound. I mean, that is a ton. Yeah, but it, 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 it soaked up a lot of beer for sure. For sure. Well, and yeah. the, the other the the problem with doing a beer like this, and you want to make these little adjustments to really dial it in if you want to, is that it's a big fucking beer. It's expensive. It takes a while to age. And so you're going to be have to make a lot of this over the next couple of years to dial it in. And I hope you're okay with that. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Well, you just made it this summer. It's not that old, honestly. That's that's pretty good true. turnaround there. That's true. I, usually this you this would be like, oh, this is probably six months old or or more. But no, it's it's yeah. already like damn smooth. And I think part of it has to do with the chloride ratio. Like I can tell you're paying attention to well, you know everything. And I kind of joked with you the other day, people, oh, people just tossing booze into their beer with reckless abandon. And, and, and no, there, you, nothing you did was with reckless abandon, except maybe the coconut. But it's like, you know, OK, mm-hmm. let's go crazy with the coconut. And uh, it's kind of it's I think it's probably like JP said, it's probably covering up some of the other things. It's probably covering up um, the booze. And it, and yeah, it is, a, it is a very smooth, smooth booze character. So. But I don't know. You don't want to use the the cheap stuff either. So no, you know. Actually, yeah. the 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 best uh, bourbon oaking I've I've had the best experience was wild turkey, hmm. which you well, know isn't like cheap necessarily, but it's not necessarily like you know you don't go to a bar and ask for a wild turkey unless you're unless you're trying to get lucky. I guess I don't know. Tur- but, turkey and water, turkey yeah. and water, baby. And then just you know, and then and soak that with some oat cubes, and then you, but you let it you let it sit for like four months to really let everything kind of like come out. Uh, how much bourbon did you add to this, John? Uh, so I had a, a while back. I did a stout, and uh, I was going off of you know some of the uh, the recipes on uh, you know Northern Brewer and More Beer, and they were calling for about twelve ounces in five gallons, and I did that and. I nearly puked. I had, I had the whole thing. It was, it was, it was like taking a shot. So I, I just went directly have that. Yeah, I went from 11 ounces down to 5.5. And uh, it, and I agree, it's subtle. Um, I'm not sure if I want to pick it up just just a hair, maybe a few more ounces or so. Yeah, give it a give it a you know give it a shot. That's the best thing about doing it in the keg is you can just add it, right? Stir it up or it. shake. Yeah, and then you taste it and you figure it out what's going. You can always add some more. Right. So, yeah. so do you have, did you have temperature controlled fermentation for this? Yeah, it was at uh, it was right between sixty five and sixty six. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Through. Yeah. That was. I mean, to me, that's really such an achievement. And you know, when you're stepping up to making big beers from normal strength beer, to be able to to have you know that temperature control and the yeast be healthy and to have something that attenuates really well and not be fusely and yucky. I mean that that's that's really great right there. Yeah, Thank you. we don't want, we don't want to be yucky. No, no yucky not. is bad. It's a yuck free zone. <laughs> um, Jonathan, do you have anything specific for the boys here? Um, so you know, me and Cooper were kind of going back and forth. Uh, one was just you know the the oak because it really wasn't oaked. My my initial and primary question was, should that be in that category? because it's technically mm. not aged in a vessel of wood. Or, or, or go spice or vegetable, and then someone picks out the bourbon, and you get in trouble, or just go, like, experimental, and you're just in this weird land where, like, well, that's not that different. That should just be in a 33B. You know, like, right. it's kind of – there's there's a lot of no man's lands with, you know, with judging where it's like, hey, this is a really special beer, and it's, it's unique, and it's, you know, if you declare this and this and this, you got to be careful because not everybody's going to get that like bourbon you know so um so i think I, it's in the right place i think it's in the right place for this um and then the other question is and, and i know that uh 
Dr. Shah is, is <laughs> tends to be a touch more uh, sensitive to vanilla. Um, what did you guys think about the vanilla level? Because obviously you don't have that barrel contributing that the vanilla in character. So I'm using. I didn't know it was there until you said it. Okay. I, I would have liked to have a little more. Yeah. And that goes back to what, what JP was saying about like the cubes. And I think just having some oak cubes would have gotten you a lot of vanilla character and a little more wood character. And, you know, I, I respect your thought process. And I think that was really uh, an, an interesting thought process, what, what you did. H- having said that, I might, you know, throw in some oak cubes in for, uh, for a, a couple of weeks. Okay. Maybe a month might, might have been a good idea. I mean, I, I don't know. If, totally. you're, do, if yeah. you're doing cubes, I would not go any any shorter than two months. And yeah. what, what, what would you guys suggest? We're talking two ounces, four ounces. In five gallons of this beer, I would I would probably go an ounce and a half. It's been so long. I it, it's hard to say. I wouldn't go like overdo it because yeah, you, you, be, don't you want go the two. Yeah, yeah, you want the cube because you want the the liquid to have time to penetrate the wood and get all of the different flavors. I don't know if you've ever seen like the oak cubes before, yeah, yeah, uh, but sure. they have they have layers, and right. so the outer layer is all because it's a chopped up you know barrel, and so the outer layer is darker, and then as and the layers go in, they're lighter and lighter and lighter, and you're getting different flavor combinations all throughout that. Whereas a chip is just one, they take wood chips and toast them to one level, and that's it. So you get it's very one dimensional. So cubes are better, but they take longer. Got it. Depends on what you it's want. Got to got to permeate. Yeah. 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 Don't, don't go too crazy with the wood. It's the you know over boozed and over oaked beers are just yeah. It's no sorry. way to go through life, man. No. Going too crazy with the wood. Yeah, that's what she said. Yeah, ah. that's right. She sure did. Uh, all right. Anything else on either side of the aisle? Uh, just one last thing was uh, bitterness. Mm-hmm. Was that relatively? in the ballpark i, I like so. the balance with the, the bitterness it was just it was low and out of the way and a little bitterness from the malt but it yeah you know it's so smooth that you don't you don't care it's just balanced nicely with what it is and, i thought it worked well yeah yeah if you notice yeah, I, it, I agree i mean the, the bitterness doesn't come up totally to match the malt yeah but this is a malt focused beer so i mean you had it, it it's like it's close which to me is all you really need in 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 this. It's it's why you still got an excellent score. What I, feel- I would say is maybe don't adjust the bitterness, yeah. but maybe maybe dial like you're going like super chloride heavy. Maybe dial, see what it comes out like if you dial back the chlorides just a touch. I mean, don't go yeah sulfate crazy or anything, but just let it pull the, the chlorides back just a little touch and see what it does like it it might have a little more interesting edge to it and it might even accent the booze a little better and kind of just like okay it's got a little heft to it like if you go too too chloride heavy heavy then it's just too smooth and you know it's it's nice to drink a beer that's this smooth but i get like kind of a a a tanginess at the at at the edge it's like almost a sweetness at the edge it's like i don't know there's like a little not syrupy but just like a Something like a little, just too, too, it's yeah. not cloying, but it's like the, the edge of it is just like not really there to stand up against all that kind of mm. smooth sweetness, you know? Gotcha. And it's not, not super, again, it's not cloying. It's just like, it's semi-sweet, but it's like just all smooth and no like back backbone kind of, you know what okay. I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. Totally. Okay. Yeah. No, right. Yeah, but it's it's good where it is too. It's really. I'll drink the rest of this. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. All right, John. Well, if that's it, man, we'll let you go. All right. Really appreciate it, guys. Thanks cool. so much. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thanks, man. All Cheers. Right. Take it easy, guys. Nice All chatting right. with. Thanks for sharing your beer. Bye. All right. Thank you. All right, we're going to take one last break. We're going to come back. We're going to wrap things up here on Doctor Homebrew. Hang on. We'll be right back. Hello, fellow BNers. This is Sully from the 21st Amendment Brewery located in San Francisco, just two blocks from Giants Park. Before Nico and I opened the 21A and before I was a professional brewer, I homebrewed on my small four-burner apartment stove in a back house in Santa Monica, California, making my extract brews before graduating to the daunting idea of all-grain brewing. Homebrew books and information was hard to come by back then. The internet hadn't been invented yet, along with other things we take for granted today, like electricity and potable water. 
One thing I wish I had back then when I was learning was a radio show that could teach me the ins and outs of brewing and answer questions that I had about home brewing, a resource for making great craft beer. The 21st Amendment Brewery is excited to be a proud sponsor of Dr. Homebrew, a great show that teaches you what you need to know about making incredible beer. Good stuff. Listen up, you might learn something. I certainly did. And thanks for your support. Tasty Crack Games. Now, back to the examination. All right, thanks for sticking around, everyone. We're wrapping it up here in Dr. Homebrew. We got, uh, you know, our, our blood alcohol levels up, and we're, <laughs> and we're uh, yeah. ready to rock, man. Good beers. Definitely work the, 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 the different ends of the stratosphere, the stratum, the, straight, the, the, the range. Actually, very good and know, excellent whatever. beers. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, we did, well, I just meant like style-wise, right? Well, An ESB yep. to uh, yep. Imperial Stout with coconut and, uh, yeah. and uh, you know, Woodford. It's funny Maybe we'll go I've, the other way on the next show. We'll just start with the crazy, you know, big beer and go to some, <laughs> something less crazy. An American thing. lager. Yeah, it's, it's funny. Like, I've, I've thought about doing, you know, back when I was doing beers like this, uh, using Woodford. But every time I was drinking it, it's like, I just, it's too, it's too round. And I think mm-hmm. with, a, with, with a beer like this, because, you know, you're replicating the barrel that had the booze in it. There's none of, you know, there's, so the booze that you're getting out of it is in, in the wood. It's going to yeah. be oxidized a little bit. It's going to be, it's not going to be round and smooth. It's going to be pokey and it's going to be, you know, a little bit more assertive in the malt character. And, and it's just, so I, I, I don't think I, I stand by my assertion. I don't think uh, Woodford was the, the choice, but again, it Even all comes it's down to personal very, preference. Cool. Yeah. It's an oh. excellent. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's the bourbon Sipper. of the Kentucky Derby for God's sake. Just drink it. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's the thing. Like, you wouldn't use like a Blanton's or something like that either, because they're they're very like similar, right? Or like a Basil mm-hmm. Hayden, I, I think would be uh, to add bourbon into the beer wouldn't work, but I think the barrels from those bourbons would work. Or you could chase yeah, the beer a with, with a shot yeah. of that uh, bourbon. You know? Yeah, uh, you absolutely could. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we're going to take off, everybody. Thank you very right. much for joining us here on Dr. Homebrew. If you're looking for more beer content, well, it uh, depends on when you listen to this. We might have a show after this. We might have shows before this. Who who can really tell? Uh, yeah, and if you want to send us beer, you could email yep. Brian at thebrewingnetwork.com. That's there Brian with an I. And get us your beer. We'll take anything. Really, We're looking for a few good beers and beer, some crummy ones. Mead, right. cider, sake, yeah, what have you. Anything, man. I would love to get some hard here. seltzer. Does anyone make a good hard seltzer? Kombucha. Yeah, yeah. It'd be cool to have a, a good homemade ha- hard seltzer. I don't know. Those are uh, those are still weird for me. I've had a couple good ones, um, but they gotta be. You know, it's like you're you're drinking. You want it to be interesting. But uh, we'll help you make. I mean, we'll we'll talk we'll talk it to anything about anybody or something like that. All right, mm-hmm. everybody. Thanks a lot for tuning in, and uh, until next time, we'll see you later.